In this morning's flu watch, new disturbing information on just who's being rushed to the hospital with the H1N1 virus. The CDC is reporting this morning that almost half did not have underlying conditions. Our Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with everything you need to know. Good morning, Good Jen. morning, Maggie. So this report, which uh, we're going to show up on our screen in a second, really defies what we thought initially about this, that you had to have an underlying condition to get really sick from H1N1. That's right. And let's put this new data into context. Yesterday, we heard new data from Canada and Mexico, which showed that the vast majority of patients who became critically ill did have pre-existing medical conditions. This number, these, this study, which came from the CDC yesterday, represents 1,400 American patients found that 46% of them really didn't have underlying conditions. That's However, alarmingly high. Right, well, it's about half and half. However, they did not fully account for obesity yet. And we know that because two thirds of the population is obese, we expect that number to go down and the number with pre-existing medical conditions to therefore go up. And some of the pre-existing conditions were asthma, diabetes, weakened immune system, and pregnant. And pregnancy, and we know that that's a very high risk group for H1N1 complications. Let's talk about one of the ways to prevent H1N1, the vaccine. Right. Yesterday, Indiana and Tennessee received their shots. Exactly. So now people will have a choice. They can either get the injectable or the nasal spray. That's I think right. it's important, once again, to go over the differences. True. We cannot emphasize this enough. The, the injectable form represents a killed virus. So that is approved for people over the age of six months. It's okay for so pregnant women. it does not women. have a live virus. Correct. Okay. And it, people should not take it if they have an egg allergy. The mm. nasal spray does contain a live but weakened form of the flu virus, only approved for healthy people aged two to 49, not for pregnant women, not for people with medical conditions or asthma. This is the one that came out first, but when all of the doses are released, it'll be a lot more evenly balanced. So if this does not have a live virus, does it mean that the injectable has fewer side effects? Well, usually what we see with the injectable form is some redness, soreness around the, the injection site. You can see some body aches and some low-grade fever. With the nasal spray, you can see a lot of the same things. The only difference is you might see a little bit of a stuffy nose and kind of mild upper respiratory in infection or symptoms with the nasal spray. Dr. Jennifer Ashton, thank you, you bet, as always.